Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper and this is the Let Rover by Voices. The Let Rover is in, well, in their description, a multi-diode overdrive module. Well, that's a lot of fancy words to say, well, this is essentially a very usable and very applicable uh, effect module that will add a lot of harmonics and a lot more coloration and dynamics to any sound that you patch into this. And I will be diving deeper into the actual inner workings and the theory behind diode overdrives uh, further down the video. Uh, for now, I do want to make sure that uh, I do thank both Moti and Dackel over at Voices for providing me with this module. Um, but as always, they haven't had any say into the actual content of this video. And apparently I need to uh, make sure that I mention that a bit more often. All of my videos are of course, always my true and honest and humble opinion. But for now, I do want to make sure that we focus a bit more on this module going forward. Um, it's been a great journey to review this. And this is the second one of the voices modules that I'm reviewing. So I'll be putting up the um, the other one, the Reduxer up there. Um, but what I also want to point out is if you want to know more about voices and their design philosophy or how they approach module creation, making, being an actual vendor, uh, you can find that here as well. Um, so for now I would say, please make sure you're comfortable, you're sitting down, relaxing, or if you're like me, standing up, and if you enjoy that, don't you worry. I just wanna make sure that we're all ready for this because uh, it's gonna be a bit of a different ride with a bit more uh, Professor Jesper uh, educating you on the finer things of uh, electronic design, because uh, here we go. So here we have the Let Rover by Voices, up close and personal. Um, so as I always do, just do a quick intro to the actual UI and then we're actually gonna dive right in. Uh, but I do have to warn everyone, um, I will throw in a bit of uh, theory here as well because I wanted to understand how diode overdrives worked and I thought I might share that with uh, you as well. Um, so the first thing that comes across is this 300 degrees um, which is essentially a custom made knob here. So that's very nice. It's very, well, it's, it's play worthy, you might say. And I like that. Um, then you've got your three different boost levels, uh, which is again, um, it's, it's mainly there for well, boosting the bass sound. And I'll show you what that means and I'll let you listen to what that means as well. And then we get into the real interesting part here is here we have the three diodes uh, that we can use. So we've got a red one, a blue one, and a germanium one. And as said, I'm gonna dive a bit more into the uh, actual theory behind how diode overdrive, well, in not how these work in general, you might say. You've got your coloration, which is a more about the, the brightness of the actual tone. So you've got your boost for bass, you've got your color for brightness, um, you've got your gain for the input channels right there. You've got dual inputs, but you've got one output, just keep that in mind. And you've got output volume there as well. And you've got CV in, which is gonna control your uh, drive amount, and you have an attenuator for that as well. So that being said, um, let's patch this up so we can actually see what we're gonna be working with. And as most of you know, I like to work with a triangle wave in these kind of cases. So I'm using the Orna just outside of your screen and I've got a, well, I've got a well, fairly normal triangle wave set up. Let me just grab my headset real quickly. There we go and I've patched it into my buffered matrix so we can actually let you listen to what we are working with. Uh, but I also want to make sure that you can see what we're working with. So here we have the triangle wave. I might want to increase the frequency a bit so you can see it a bit better. There you go, that's nice. And I also want to patch this into the actual mixer.
as you can hear a extremely sharp triangle wave if you look at the well the spectrum analysis as well it's nice and divided where you see the even and the uneven uh, Fourier building blocks oh yeah apologies um, for those of you who've never heard about Fourier analysis um, what Fourier analysis actually tells us is that every uh, kind of wave shape can actually be described or defined by combining an infinite number of sine waves in well in a well very defined uh, collection so what this actually tells us in the frequency analysis is how much of each of these sine waves you need in order to build up a well a, a triangle and that is something that is very commonly used in mathematics, in physics. And uh, for those of you who want, uh, have a look at Fourier analysis or Fourier transforms on Wikipedia. I'll make sure to link that in the uh, video description as well. So if you thought that was it uh, with <laughs> the actual theory, uh, you guessed wrong uh, because we're going to dive even deeper into this. So what we'll do is I'm just going to show you what we have here so I'm just going to grab the same output and I'm going to patch that into the lead rover and the further we get in there the more we'll actually learn about how this thing works so again I'm going to multiply that so we now have some molds there too there you go So first things first is I'm going to patch it into the ES9 so you can actually see what's happening. And then following that, we're going to patch it into the output too. So first let's turn off the actual original sound so you'll see the, uh, the audio analysis stopping there for a bit. But let's dive in. So you immediately see that this immediately starts to overdrive, even though I've got drive at zero. So we immediately, so this is again, this is one of the ways in which you can achieve overdrive or distortion, whatever you want to call it. So you can indeed increase the gain to such a level where you'll see the actual wave shape already being distorted. And you'll, you'll hear that as well. But again, this is not using the diode overdrive circuit yet. So what I like to do is I, I want to make sure that we put the actual gain to such a level where we still see a very distinct triangle wave um, coming out of the, well, the letter over in this case. And what we're then going to do is we're going to apply more of the drive. But before we do that, let's talk a bit more about diodes. Um, so the most commonly known diode is indeed a, an LED. And LED stands for a light emitting diode. But what's a diode, you might ask? Well, a diode is an electrical component that only allows current in a single direction. So it either goes from, uh, from left to right or it goes from right to left, but never the other way around. And we can use that. So if you look at the diagram I have here, uh, you'll see that we have two of those diodes lined up right next to each other. And we can use that because the nice thing about diodes uh, next to it only allows, well, um, voltages, well, sorry, current coming in from one direction is it'll only respond if a certain voltage is met. And from there on, it'll start to actually work. And in the case of a LED, um, it will actually start to emit light. So if we then do that for both directions, because of course the, the signal we're looking at is, um, is alternating current. So we have something that goes up and is positive. So where current goes one way and we have something on the negative where current goes the other way. And if we then were to use both of the exact same diodes, will get well, essentially symmetrical clipping. So both at the top and at the bottom, you'll see that a part of that is being chopped off. 
and that is at least that's how I understand that um, uh, diode overdrive actually works if if I'm wrong please don't hesitate to tell me that um, because I'm always here to learn uh, because what we then see is depending on what kind of LED you, you use you'll get a different behavior uh, towards the actual well sound that we uh, let through because uh, all of these LEDs will behave slightly differently because uh, to be quite fair I say well uh, LEDs only work uh, from a certain voltage on but there's of course a bit of a curve there there's a bit of a, a bit of tolerance it's um, it's not exactly sharp there so it'll behave differently so what you'll then see is that you get with the red LED you'll get a very rich compressed overdrive and with the blue it's going to be more uh, more crunchy it's going to be more uh, responsive you might say and the germanium one that is defined by a more well you might say a more old school kind of sound uh, you might call it vintage or uh, brocant if you want so okay uh, apologies i'm gonna throw my professor's hat out the window for now and um if you've got any questions about this, just drop me a line and uh, I'm more than willing to uh, to discuss that with you. But if we now, so right now I've got it on the red one and I'm just going to increase the overdrive. You'll see that it starts to... get to a very nice and bright kind of sound. So uh, if you also look at the spectrum analysis you'll see that we are going to introduce a lot more harmonics there so you'll see that I'm just going to eat up some of these first and then you're going to see all of these other harmonics popping up and we're almost to a point when you might say okay well this is already a a block wave a, a, a pulse wave you might say and if we then also introduce a bit more boost you'll see that we have a bit more bass sound to it and all the way to the three and even more and now we can also play with the color of course and to be fair even though we are looking at a static sound right now um, the most well, the most effect you're going to get is when you apply this to uh, dynamic sounds. So when you listen to a melody, or if you uh, apply this to a well, to a bit of percussion, which we'll will of course do during this video. Uh, but I do want to make sure that we all understand what's happening here. So let's go to the blue one. So again, we're going to start off with a triangle wave, and we are going to apply a bit to that. And there you have that level of crunch that was described, right? So let's. So this is the blue one, and this is the red. Red, blue. It's got a bit of more brightness. It's more crunchy. It is more distortive. And um, in in a few minutes, we're going to listen to this being applied to a a kick drum. Uh, to snares, to all kinds of sounds, and you'll you, you'll really start to see and hear the actual intricacies there. So let's go down, and let's go to the germanium one. And as said, this is of course well described as being vintage, uh, brocant, old school, you might say. And the one thing you'll see is that immediately on. Uh, you'll see that the triangle wave we're working with is already turning into more of a sine wave at lower gain settings. So if we then up the gain, we already have this distorted sound, but I'm just gonna go down and might want to grab it like that. So this is still a, a triangle wave, but at, at much lower volumes. Uh, but if we then open up the distortion, you'll see that we get there with a germanium one, nice and you might say dusty, wooly, old schooly. You might say all of those kind of things. And let's add a bit of boost to it. 
this is also where the boost adds the most color you might say and let's add a bit of gain to it so even though we all now we actually start with a distorted signal altogether but this is just nice and this is this is something that you can have applied to uh, let's say a, a, a 70s or 80s uh, guitar this is something that uh, colored the well um, all of the initial punk and all of the initial hard rock you might you might you might know from those eras and it's very nice but let's uh, turn this down for now I did promise you that uh, while we were done with the actual signal analysis on static sounds we might also want to introduce some well some percussion so what I'm gonna do is in I'm just gonna disconnect this for now and I'm gonna go into the foundation I'm just gonna disconnect this grab another cable there and we're just gonna grab a very clean bass drum from that and I will be using the clacking keypad as my controller so there we go so let's go back to the red LED I'm just gonna dial in a very nice sound so this is the original sound that we're working with I might want to change that just slightly just I'm gonna remove some of the texture which is actual noise so this is now very clean I might want to uh, make it a bit longer bit of bend to it a bit higher and just a bit of texture then that's nice right so now I'm just gonna turn down the well the, the, the sound that we are passing into it so this is everything turned down I've got the gain setting pretty low and it's quite the same so we're just gonna increase the gain so even at this point you already hear a bit of effects of the of the module and I've got the boost all the way at one as you'll see there is a bit of a difference there so uh, I'm just gonna change the scale of the actual sound there so we can actually see what happens so as you can see the the main difference we see right now is the volume so if I then increase the gain just slightly uh, but now we already see some effect happening so we need to go back a bit further even a bit more more like that so this is very clean so you've got two ways to actually add distortion one is by using the gain and making sure you go over the actual uh, volumes that you want or you can use the diode function there so this is now very clean again and we're just going to increase this I'll be the halfway you immediately hear that distorted effect all the way to the top maybe add a bit of boost <laughs> so I was not around during the 1990s uh, Gabba or hardcore house scenes but this is crunchy as can be let's add a bit of color to that So again, this is something that you can work with. Uh, let's go have a look at blue. Um, turn it all the way down again. So it's got much more crunch to it. A bit of boost. Oh, wow. This goes overboard altogether. Uh, maybe change the color a bit. coloration almost behaves like a high pass filter uh, sorry a low pass filter actually so that's nice change the boost again 
and let's go have a listen to the germanium one and here you see that even at these low gain signals you already start to see a lot of distortion or at least uh, a signal shape in there let's add a bit of gain to it just to This goes overboard altogether. <laughs> I like that, I truly do. Um, so then let's have a listen to what it does on, um, maybe on some, yeah, some hi-hats. Oh, I might need to reload this just slightly. I always need to repatch things all together. So this is set to eight. So I will now be able to do that. So this is just a hi-hat. Might add a bit of decay to that. Again, it just makes sure that it's really noisy. If we then do that for a snare drum, all the way down there, please. Blue. It does add a lot of um, texture to the, you might say the tail or the decay tail of the actual uh, snare. That's great, and germanium. So how do we then use this in a patch? So uh, let me just create a patch from scratch real quickly. So I'll uh, say goodbye to the, um, to the scopes for now, and we will actually start and build something here. Um, so there we go. So what I'll do is I'll um, quickly create a small patch. So I will be introducing a bit of, well, um, reverb and delay by using the, uh, the Zoya Euro Bureau. There you go, apologies for that. And I will be patching in that straight from the mixer that I've got. Again, there we go. And I will be, of course, be using uh, the owner, which will be uh, running the well, the melody for today, and I will be using the owner again. Uh, and just to be absolutely fair, I'm I'm, I'm going to make sure that we still keep on using the triangle wave because that's the one that we uh, did some tests with, and I'm going to patch the owner into well from there into the um, into the boundary. And from the boundary, I'm gonna grab the. Well, what do we? What shall we do? Well, I'm gonna grab the <clears throat> the triggers from Hermit as well. So let's start playing with this. Make sure that we have that. So we have the boundary creating something. And we then just might say, well, we're just gonna grab the outputs. From boundary and patch that into the lead rover I'm just gonna go all the way to the red one and then make sure that we patch the outputs into our mixer let's just reduce the amount of delay there for now because now it's and reverb turn it down a bit We'll reintroduce it later on, but for now I just want to focus on how this behaves.
this is red blue and germanium this is immediately a very recognizable sound if you ask me so the only thing we've done is we took the melody from the owner patched it through boundary to apply a bit of uh, envelopes to it and we then patched it into the lead rover So this is just great. Uh, what you can then also do, of course, is let's see if we can figure that out, is grab the same envelope from the boundary and use that to influence the actual amount of drive. I'm just gonna turn this all the way up. So this is just great to play with. Uh, what you can also do is, of course, grab an LFO or any other, well, sounds, or sorry, and any other CV source to actually play with this. So I'm just gonna grab this and put this in there. And increase the LFO rate for this. This is the LFO rate that we're working with. And if we then increase the actual sound. Just something to play with. Um, let's continue this actual patch because I think that um, <laughs> I think we all understand what we can do with the uh, with the LED Rover. But I always want to uh, finish this off with a nice patch. So again, grab the foundation. Make sure that we patch that in there. And then once we've got a nice patch going on, I will do some repatching to make sure that we patch everything through uh, the actual well, lead rover, just to make sure that we all understand what we can do with these kind of nice and crunchy sounds. Uh, so we've got the bass drum going. Let's add a bit of snare to it. I might want to increase the LFO a bit. So right now we only have the overdrive set for the um, for the melody. So let's just disconnect that for now and let's go bit for a more clean sound. Might want to. So what I'm going to do now is instead of just patch, patching in this, I'm just going to make sure that we get everything from the uh, owner into there we go. So we're just going to grab this here. So now it's completely clean, but now I'm just going to patch the output from the mix into the LED Rover and then from the LED Rover into the Euro Bureau. So 
so now we have a quite nice and clean sound. Go to red. This is overboard immediately, of course. So what I want to well get across to everyone by doing this is just to make sure that everyone sees that distortion is a great thing, but you might not want to apply it to your overall sound. You might just want to apply it to certain instruments or certain sounds that you've got in your system. Um, I've shown you what you can do when you apply it to the actual melody, but in this mix, what I like to do is I actually like to apply it specifically and uniquely to the bass drum. So let's do that. So we're just going to do it like that again, make sure that we have it. So we've got everything still running. The only thing we're missing is the bass drum. And we're just going to patch that in with another cable I'm grabbing. Adding a bit more texture to it. And I'm going to tune the bass drum a bit higher. Make it a bit more snappy. Hear it a bit better. There you go. And if we now start to introduce the overdrive, now it becomes a very nice and nuanced um, bit of an effect specific to this sound, and I love that. because it does drive the bass forward. And if we then grab, well, as we did just now, I'm just gonna grab an LFO to operate the amount of overdrive. creating some additional music. So let's bring the bass drum a bit more to the background. Let's reintroduce a bit of the delay.
So with that, I think we can uh, actually stop this jam. Um, I hope you um, gotten to understand the uh, Let Rover a bit better. Let's go back to the studio and let's wrap this up, shall we? Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this uh, deep dive into the Let Rover by Voices. Um, as said, I do have to thank both Moti and Deckel over at Voices for uh, providing me with these units in order for me to make these videos. And I can only say that I've truly enjoyed uh, deep diving into both of them. Um, primarily here on the Let Rover, what it meant to me is it gave me a lot more understanding on the inner workings of how distortion units actually work. And specifically, um, it challenged me to educate myself in order to understand and then of course also explain to you how diode, well, distortion overdrive works as well. Uh, so that's great. And I, I, I do have to say that uh, with this understanding, I have come to a better appreciation uh, not just on the Lat Rover, but also on some of the other modules that I've done previously. Uh, but where the Lat Rover really sets itself apart is, of course, with the tweak ability that this has. So you do have that option to truly dial in, okay, well, what the level of distortion is that you want or overdrive. In my opinion, both of these are the same. Uh, but um, if I'm wrong with that, please let me know. Um, but what I really like is that you have those three different approaches where you can have those two different LEDs and then also have the germanium uh, diode there too. Uh, but at the same time where you have the, the switch to make sure that you have that added base oomph, you might say, uh, with the with the boost. And the, 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 well, the coloration setting is, of course, in my opinion, a, a very nicely designed low-pass filter, but I think there's more to it than just that. And I need to dive a bit deeper to truly understand what it does. Um, what I truly love about these kind of modules is that they teach you that much, not just on how the electronics work, but also what kind of sounds you like. And what I've come to understand and learn from this as well is I truly like to apply these kind of overdrive effects on percussion. Um, and that's something I truly, well, I, I, I applaud voices for. Um, this is gonna be one of my go-to effect modules going forward. And again, I have to thank them for making sure that this is such an easy to understand module that is also educational at the same time and yeah it's it's been great to play with this to get to know this and it's going to be in my rack for uh, quite some time um again that being said um i hope everyone enjoyed this if you've got any questions any comments any feedback uh please feel free to just drop that in the comment section below um, if you want to have a more personal connection, uh, feel free to uh, join our Discord, uh, where we have a very friendly community of people on the one hand, uh, making sure that we can support uh, with any sort of Q&A you want, uh, but also there for uh, moral support if you're ever struggling with, uh, with gas. And um, yeah, we've got our weekly uh, interviews and open Q&As on Discord too. So that's one of the well, one of the many reasons why you want might want to join our Discord. Um, if you don't want to do either of that, but you still want to uh, give me some feedback, give me some notes, uh, feel free to drop me a line at Jesper at the modular clubhouse .nl and I'll get back to you ASAP. If you do want to support the channel, um, easiest is of course, as always, to uh, use one of the affiliate links down below. Um, those won't cost you anything extra, but they will make sure that a very small percentage of your spend will go back towards this channel, and that's gonna help going forward. Um, yeah, I think that's it, right? So uh, again, I do want to thank Voices for making this available. I do want to thank you, the audience, for tuning in and spending, well, a bit of your time to uh, get to know, well, the, uh, the Let Rover by Voices. And for now, I would say, please, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you for my next video. Cheers.